Good evening, and welcome to our Philanthropic Leaders Appreciation Event. This event is designed as a way for us to come together to celebrate you and how your gifts have enabled the growth of Wilmington College. You made the conscious decision to support the college through a leadership gift or by creating a planned gift, and we are humbled and grateful for your support. I am Matt Warhoptig, Vice President for College Advancement and alumni from the class of 1993. Tonight's event will feature several speakers and videos, all designed to highlight the transformational impact that your gifts make on our students and our campus. Before we begin the evening, I would ask that we gather in the manner of friends for a moment of silence to reflect on the blessings that we have in our lives and be thankful for the opportunities that these gifts afford us. This year has truly been one for the record books at Wilmington College. The college is celebrating a momentous occasion with our sesquicentennial anniversary. We have experienced unprecedented highs with the receipt of the $13.5 million estate gift of Andy and Kathy Withrow, and we have faced one of the largest challenges in the 150-year history of the college with the COVID-19 pandemic. Despite the highs and lows, Wilmington College has moved forward with purpose and is weathering the storm well and your gifts played a critical role. In fact, your gifts to the COVID-19 relief efforts totaled just over $95,000 and have been put to good use in successfully returning our students to campus safely. We could not be more appreciative. Coming up during the next few months, we'll be providing weekly historical stories on Wednesdays, shared via the Quake radio station. There are monthly sesquicentennial moments articles being publicized in the Wilmington News Journal as well as on the college's website. We are collecting items for a special time capsule, and in December, we will have a 150th themed Giving Tuesday event. In the spring, we will have a special exhibit from the Quaker Heritage Center, a music celebration, and the year will conclude with the 150th anniversary grand finale in April. You all will be getting more information on the finale as we get closer to the event. For the moment, you can get more information on the full schedule events at our website at www.wilmington.edu. Now it is my pleasure to welcome Interim President Erica Goodwin. Erica is a 1995 graduate of Wilmington College, where she obtained her BS in athletic training. She then received a Master's in Physical Education from Wright State and a Doctorate in Higher Education Administration from Union College. Erica has spent her career at Wilmington College and is a tenured professor teaching athletic training, sports science, and equine science, just to name a few. She has led the accreditation process for the college, is an active speaker and published author, and been involved in way too many areas on campus to list here tonight. Her recent role was the VP for Academic Affairs, but most importantly, she is the first woman to serve in the president's role in the history of Wilmington College. Good evening. I'm Erica Goodwin, Interim President here at Wilmington College, and I welcome you to our Philanthropic Leaders Appreciation Event. I'm sorry we could not meet together this evening for dinner as we normally do, but as you know, 2020 has brought unprecedented times and unprecedented challenges. I wish to thank the Board of Trustees members, the Alumni Engagement Team for planning the event this evening, and also our Marble Society committee members, Christine Snyder, the chair, Lee Hieronymus, Justin Newman, Brad Schwamberger, and Diane Ruder. I also wish to congratulate and thank our leadership level donors and especially acknowledge our honor roll of donors, our new Sam Marble Society inductees, and our cumulative giving honorees as well. This year, I have started into this leadership role uh, really sort of in the spring as Jim Reynolds made his transition out to Millican University. Uh, we were right in the middle of the COVID-19 pandemic and I had already been the chair of the COVID-19 response team in the spring when we transitioned our students to online learning. That happened fast and furious over spring break and we had to have a lot of things in place in order to make spring successful, and it was. It took a lot of courage and bold leadership 
to uh, make the tough decisions and to get folks uh, mobilized. We made the courageous decision to reopen in the fall with very careful plans. We have had very low numbers of cases on campus from either students or faculty or staff. Uh, our health department is really elated at uh, the careful preparation and practice that we've had to keep our campus safe. And uh, we are as well. So we hope to continue to move forward. Our careful planning and preparation has led to a strong enrollment. Uh, we have 1,068 students on campus. This has kept us very strong financially in spite of the current situation. Of course, a large part of our success this past spring uh, through summer and into fall has been our donors. Uh, gifts from our donors impact our students and our campus greatly and it is very much appreciated. We certainly have been busy this summer and into fall. We have three new master's programs starting next year. In the fall, we will have our Master's of Science in Athletic Training. And in the spring, we will uh, welcome our new Master's of Science in Occupational Therapy, as well as a new Master's in Organizational Leadership, which will be taught out of our branch campus. We have worked to complete many of our campus master plan capital projects, and that was through the magnificent gift, uh, an estate gift, of Andy and Kathy Withrow. Andy graduated in 1958, and in the early 60s, he began giving $20 a year back to Wilmington. By 2008, their means had grown, and so had their gifts. They left the first $1 million non-estate gift to the college. Andy has passed away a few years ago, and with Kathy's passing, they left the rest of their estate, $13.5 million, to the college. We will be honoring Andy and Kathy Withrow later in the program as our philanthropists of the year. The recent estate gift highlights the transformational impact that the Marble Society has on our campus. Never underestimate the power of your donations and your giving and what it does for our students and how it impacts their lives. Thanks so much and have a good evening. Hello, my name is Ypsilan Castillo Moreira, but I go by Ipsy. I come from Costa Rica and I have been here for four years now. I am a senior studying early childhood education and intervention. So the reason why I chose Wilmington is because I've actually attended many different Quaker schools throughout my life um, and they have all been really small. So when I was applying for colleges, I was really scared about attending a really big college. But then I got the opportunity to come visit Wilmington and I thought it was still really big, way too big for me. But when I came to visit, I actually fell in love with it. It was like love at first sight. So people were super nice here. There was a great community. And I was just, I felt like this was it. I, along with hundreds of students across campus, can't thank you enough for your generous support in helping students pursue higher education. This year has been extremely hard on everyone. But without your support, we would not have had a successful end of, of spring semester and the opportunity to return to campus for fall semester. We look forward to welcoming you back on campus to see all the great things Wilmington has done 
over the past year. To highlight a few, we have installed a new turf for a football field and a new flooring for a gym. They're looking really good. Uh, we have also specialized classrooms for virtual learning and all of these things would not have been possible without your support. Again, Wilmington College students are forever thankful for your support to the college. Thank you. Hi, my name is Kalise Jones. Hello, my name is Faith Williams. Hi, my name is Peyton Mullins. Hi, my name is Michaela Gray. Hello, my name is Rebecca Simonji. Hello, my name is Ariana Riccardi. First of all, I would just like to say thank you so much. I really cannot thank you enough for the opportunity that this donation has provided me. I'm a business administration major with a marketing concentration and I have a minor in economics. Um, what I plan to do with this is go to grad school and get another business degree so that I can be a high school business teacher. And I want to do this to be able to provide students in high school with the same opportunities I was through a business program that really shaped me into the person that I am today. After college, I plan on becoming a pediatric or orthopedic surgeon. I am majoring in animal science with a pre-veterinary concentration and I'm minoring in communication arts. Because of your generosity, I'm able to pursue a four-year education, and I'm so grateful for that. Um, I'm a first-generation college student, and I'm heavily involved on the Wilmington College campus. I currently serve as the student body vice president, as well as Peace Corps Prep Program president, the Resident Student Association president, and several other organizations on campus, as well as theater productions. And Wilmington College is my home. Thank you again for your generosity so students like me can pursue a college education. I want to say thank you for your scholarship that has allowed me to pursue my goals and dreams in life. And I can't thank you enough. Hope to uh, attend law school and be a criminal defense attorney eventually. So with your help, it makes my dreams possible and I'm just so thankful for your gift. Thank you again so much for your generosity so students like myself can pursue a college education. Tonight, we have a very special recognition as we introduce our third annual Philanthropist of the Year Award. This award was designed to recognize extraordinary leadership in the area of philanthropy at Wilmington College. The award recipients, through their generous giving, have made a transformational impact on Wilmington and the lives of the students we serve. While acknowledging that many people prefer to give in a low profile or anonymous way, we see the need for positive role models as a way of raising awareness of the value, impact, and enjoyment of strategic giving. This year's choice for recipients was one of the easiest we have had, and I'm honored to acknowledge Andy and Kathy Withrow as the philanthropists of the year. The Withrows of Cincinnati had a long history of supporting Andy's alma mater. Starting in the 1960s, almost immediately after Andy graduated, they contributed $20 annually to the College Phonathon. Their legacy of giving continued through the decades and increased as their means allowed. In 2008, theirs was the first one million non-estate gift received by Wilmington College. It provided seed funding for the construction of the Center for the Sciences and Agriculture, the college's largest academic building, which opened in 2016. According to the wishes of the Withrows, the gift is restricted to capital projects and scholarships. A considerable amount has been earmarked for the renovation of campus residence halls to ensure they meet the needs of the students of tomorrow. The college initiated that work this summer in accordance with the great impact of their estate gifts. The Board of Trustees chose to rename the CSA building the Withrow Center for Agriculture, Life, and Physical Sciences. To honor the Withrow legacy, we have prepared a short video that highlights the Withrows through the eyes of the classmates that they stayed in close contact with through the years. I met Andy actually in 1955 when I was a freshman. I, I believe my friend Jim Landon, who is also a friend of Andy's, uh, introduced him to me. But then I found out the real thing was all about them trying to recruit me to be a SIG. And so after I finally uh, was eligible, a member of the fraternity, Andy became my big brother. And then I got to know him a lot better uh, during that period of time and maintained a friendship with him. 
uh, throughout our college career. Our friendship uh, continued as a member of the fraternity and just generally on campus. Uh, it became very close actually uh, uh, to the point where he invited me down to his home one time and I did spend some time at his home uh, and understood that uh, Andy was uh, a different kind of person and uh, was very kind and caring and supportive. And once you became his friend, uh, your word and his word were bonds that kept you together. I think probably one of my favorite memories on campus was also connected with a fraternity when we had a spring formal, I guess you would call it. And uh, his family uh, allowed us to use their boat on the Ohio River uh, as a site for our formal. And uh, so we found out a lot more about the Withrow family uh, in general uh, at that time. Andy graduated a year before I did. And uh, so I went, I was still in school and he ended up uh, going to the army and we just sort of lost con uh, contact until you know, probably about 1965 when uh, Andy called me and asked me if uh, my wife and I would be interested in running a camp for the Cincinnati Association of the Blind who, was, who he was employed by. And so we decided to do that. And so while we were there, we actually got to go uh, to his new house in uh, Cincinnati and meet his wife. Uh, and we found out that uh, she was a same kind of a person that Andy is, a very giving person, and uh, actually supported Andy throughout uh, his lifetime. Andy had told me on a couple occasions, and probably multiple occasions, how pleased he was that he was able to go to Wilmington College and that Wilmington College gave him a chance. And I don't know really what that chance is all about. He didn't really get into that. But I know that uh, as long as he lived, he just had a real liking of uh, Wilmington College. And I think it's because Wilmington College became his friend. And the people he dealt with had, were important to his life. And so he wanted to give back. And I mentioned he was a very caring person and, and a giving person. We sort, of, we sort of laughed because he would give us a shirt off his back, but he wouldn't give us a dollar for a cup of coffee. But they, anyhow, that was a, sort of a funny thing with him. But I know uh, even before his death, he was very, very generous uh, with the college. And then it didn't surprise I was surprised at the amount of money that he gave because I think, wow. And it didn't surprise me that he gave it to the college because he felt he could help a lot of people. And both he and his wife would have shared that kind of a feeling that they were helping other people. We would meet every, every summer and each of us would host each summer and got the chance to spend some time with them for three or four days for every summer, which continued for a long period of time. So uh, that friendship uh, we had with Andy w was not ending. Uh, and just like his friendship for Wilmington College never ended. Ed and I both come from first generation college students and we, we both were very, from very poor families. Because of our background and how we found Wilmington, and they accepted us and taught us, uh, we, we, we decided to create a scholarship. I had the possibilities of some matching contributions up to $5,000 a year. So over the years, we were able to <coughs> contribute some monies to a scholarship for those kind of students that met, uh, that, that was like our situation when we were in that position. So I'm, I'm very proud of that and, and uh, hopefully it will continue to benefit students in the future. Um, 
Andy and I both came to Wilmington as freshmen in the fall of 1954. Um, as, uh, it, it was a um, new experience for both of us. I've heard Andy a hundred times say, you know what, I didn't pay attention in high school very well. And so therefore, Wilmington took a chance on me. Andy told me, and, and I'm sure it's public knowledge, uh, that he would be accepted under a probationary basis. And if he could get the grades in six weeks, they would continue and keep him as a student. So Andy said they took a chance on me. And because of our relationship, we pledged the same fraternity, the Sigma Zetas, commonly known as the Sigs. And we, uh, a along with that, our friendship really grew. Uh, to the point where I, I went home with him a couple times, met his family. He was, uh, their family was a very gracious people. So Andy was just kind of one of the guys and, and you would have never known that he came from a family of substantial means. Kathy was just a dear, dear lady too. Yeah. You want to say anything about Edna? Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, Kathy was just a sweetheart. And uh, she and Andy were so glad to have people come and visit them. And they loved uh, entertaining and uh, fixing dinners. From the time we were in college, we really, uh, as I said before, became very dear friends. And after graduation in the Army, uh, we would get together at individuals' homes from time to time, but the fact that, that we lived up further north in Ohio uh, was a little bit of a challenge from a traveling standpoint. So we would get together at each other's houses or a resort area somewhere and spend three or four days together. And uh, there were four of us originally, John Cranick, Charles Seipel, and our and myself and our spouses. So I got my draft notice in August of 1959. So we were married in June, August I got my draft notice. And so Andy, the, the wonderful person that he was, decided to do a big going away army party for me. And we, he created and got his uncle's uh, houseboat that was on the Ohio River in Cincinnati. And we had some fraternity brothers and their spouses or girlfriends uh, came and we had a wonderful party cruising up and down the Ohio River on Andy's uncle's big houseboat. And it was absolutely wonderful. I will never obviously forget that. <laughs> That was a, and, and, and that just kind of goes to show that Andy and Kathy were the type of people that wanted to make people happy. They, they were just the, the kind of individuals that took a lot of pride and joy in seeing and helping other people. Andy was, um, he was of the person and type that wanted to help Wilmington if he could. He uh, was fortunate to have the financial means. And uh, I remember when he gave the a uh, million dollars prior to the big gift, that was the, the largest gift, I think at the time that had not come from an estate. And so that was another indication that Andy loved Wilmington. I mean, you don't give a million dollars to something unless you've got a, a good reason to. So that was a, a very key element in why he loved Wilmington so much. Sam Marble, president of Wilmington College, was a visionary leader when the college faced a turning point in its ability to serve its students. It was his foresight that allowed for the construction of Marble Hall, largely with student labor. The legacy that Sam Marble created has served as a solid foundation for college growth 
and as a model of involvement and service for generations of students, faculty, and administrators. Wilmington College still teaches the values that San Marble stood for. Hard work and self-reliance, integrity of speech and action, simplicity. We honor his foresight and vision with the naming of our most important philanthropic society, the Sam Marble Society. Some of you may even remember Sam Marble. He was president of Wilmington College from 1947 to 1959. And so um, the society was named in his honor. And there has been a, a planned giving uh, society at Wilmington College for many years. Uh, we couldn't find the exact uh, year of the origin of the society, but it was um, in honor of Sam Marble and uh, his particular energy and vision uh, made a lasting impact on the college, uh, not just by the dormitory that was built by students and faculty and the community which bears his name, but he laid the foundation of the college growth on a model of involvement and service for later generations. Why is being a member of the Marble Society a good thing? Well, the members of the Sam Marble Society are those individuals, couples, families, or groups who have demonstrated their faith in the future of the educational model, the values and the mission of Wilmington College, and who now have, through their generosity and planning, have a vested interest in the future success of the college. The Sam Marble Society recognizes those donors who have expressed their appreciation for the work of the college and their faith in its continuation by making number one, either a specific will or trust bequest or by funding a planned giving instrument or by creating or adding to an endowed fund. What's the importance of planned gifts? So making a planned gift is part of your life plan it helps you with your estate planning and it will help ensure the future success of the Wilmington College and its students. My, my goal, my dream for Wilmington College is that it can um, uh, produce the, uh, the graduates and garner the funds necessary to continue this model, which has been so successful and so important for its students. Um, the Small Liberal Arts College is, is a is in, um, it's in risk um, because of the many, many pressures of uh, for-profit education, the, the mega universities, uh, uh, all these, and the difficulties of uh, families to finance a college education. So my hope for the 175th uh, anniversary of Wilmington College is that it will still be following the model of the liberal, small liberal arts college, um, where our motto is, not by a leap, but by many steps. This society recognizes those individuals who have made the choice to remember Wilmington College with a gift from their estate, retirement plan, or by creating an endowed fund at the college. Like Sam Marble's vision all those years ago, these individuals are creating the foundation for Wilmington College's future. This year, we have the pleasure of inducting 15 new members into the Sam Marble Society. Making a planned gift is a deeply personal decision, and some people are more comfortable with recognition of their gift than others. We have created very short bios for the individuals who are willing to have their gift publicly recognized. Please join me in welcoming the following individuals. Brian Armett was a 1964 graduate majoring in mathematics. He provided for Wilmington College with a generous gift from his estate that was designated to support the operations of the college. David and Judy are 1969 graduates. David majored in biology and Judy majored in psychology. Since retiring in 2010, Judy from School of Psychology and David from Global Medical Pharmaceutical Management, they have enjoyed extensive travel in their two airstreams as well as travel overseas. David and Judy have a special place in their hearts for Wilmington College, as that is where they met, 
as well as set the track for their graduate degrees and careers. Both David and Judy were significantly influenced by Wilmington's Quaker roots during the late 60s. They are active in their church communities in both states and are politically conscious. David and Judy were so grateful for their Wilmington experiences from their wonderful instructors, small class instruction, artistic offerings, and weekly convocation. David and Judy have named Wilmington in their estate. Ned and Margaret Catter Heinrich. Margaret Lewis Catter Heinrich was a 1960 graduate majoring in education. During her 30 year career, she served as a high school English teacher and subsequently assistant principal. She loved teaching and interacting with high school students, and she impacted many lives. Margaret passed away in July of 2019, and Ned chose to establish an endowed scholarship fund in Margaret's honor. The scholarship will support students who are attending Wilmington College and studying education. Iris McKinley was a 1951 graduate of Wilmington College who majored in psychology. Iris chose to remember Wilmington College with a bequest gift from her will. Martha Custis Mary and David Mary. Martha graduated in 1983 with a degree in agriculture. Martha and her husband David established a scholarship to honor her mother, Mary Ruth Boyd Custis, who was a lifelong educator and had a passion for helping students. Martha is continuing her family's deep ties to the college. Her grandfather, Oscar F. Boyd, the namesake of Oscar F. Boyd Cultural Arts Center, was a member of the graduating class of 1911 and Wilmington College professor for more than 50 years. David Robinson is a 1965 graduate of Wilmington College, and while on campus, he majored in economics and psychology. David has been involved with the college over the years, including most recently serving on the President's Advisory Council. David joins the Marble Society by making a very generous charitable gift annuity gift. James Stewart is a 1965 graduate of Wilmington College, where he majored in history and government. He notified us of his intent to leave a portion of his estate to Wilmington College. Jamie Borer Zabala graduated in 2014 with a Bachelor of Science in Psychology. Jamie continued her education by attending Ball State University and obtaining a master's degree in Behavioral Analysts in 2017. Beyond the college years, Jamie has accumulated five years of experience working with youth and adults impacted by mental health and vocational barriers to help foster independence and growth for new opportunities for transition, planning, and employment. Jamie currently works as a vocational counselor with the state of Ohio, serving students with developmental disabilities to enhance job readiness training and career connection. Jamie currently resides near Grove City, Ohio with her husband Brad and two dogs. Jamie has named Wilmington College in her will. Please join me in congratulating our newest Marble members and welcoming them to a very important society here at Wilmington College. A few years ago, we were, um, when we were working on our wills and trusts and estate plans, um, we uh, decided at that point that it would be good um, to uh, give back to the college because it had such a lasting um, impact on and transformative impact on our lives as far as pointing us in a in the direction that we ultimately went and and so um, in thinking that through Wilmington was one of the was one of the institutions that we wanted to uh, recognize in our in our estate plan and um, so it, it was from there that we learned that um, uh, when you make a plan to gift you uh, there's an organization at Wilmington College called the uh, Sam Marble uh, society and 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 so um, we didn't know at the time that we gave the gift that the society existed but um, we're uh, certainly um, uh, proud to join um, um, we're glad to help encourage um, younger uh, donors and graduates to try and um, also help out um, it, it was a great way to make an impact on the institution and and since that time since learning of the marble marble society we've uh, I've actually become involved in um, some leadership roles on, on, a, on a committee uh, where we plan the philanthropic leader dinner and, and, and engage in other activities. So um, college friends probably don't even know um, and they may want to make gifts um, and just not even realize that, that that's important and that's, that's something that they can 
work with, you know, a financial planner to, to get set up when they're working on their will or their estate. If you can't make a, substan a substantial gift on an annual basis now, certainly planned giving is a, is a, is a way to um, earmark money, you know, decades down the road um, and, 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 and know that you're going to be making a, uh, an impact on an institution that probably changed your life, you know, substantially. And, and so I think, um, I think planned giving is a really good opportunity if, if, even if you're only making small donations on an annual basis to make that more substantial gift to make a greater impact, you know, maybe decades down the road. I hope that you have enjoyed the stories and the highlights that we have provided for you tonight and perhaps gotten a deeper understanding of just how powerful gifts are to Wilmington College. Wilmington College is an incredibly special place and touches the hearts of so many people that are involved with it. Your support of the efforts of the college are critical in what we do. And as you've heard all night long, this is our way of saying thank you. Thank you for your gifts of time, talent, and treasures. And thank you for ensuring the future of Wilmington College. Thank you.